Hello everyone. I just wanted to do a quick video uh, about that Charlemagne outline assignment. I think it was a little confusing in class. My apologies. Trying to share the screen. I don't know if everybody saw it. So a few things. One is um, where we can find the assignment, what the assignment says, and then also uh, we'll just look quickly together in this video at uh, a sample assignment so you have an idea. It is um, not an easy assignment uh, because it does require you to use a few different sources about Charlemagne. It also requires you to really not only answer a question um, but to really create an argument. So um, this is something that maybe if you were coming into class and you planned on having a, a debate about uh, how much Charlemagne united his kingdom, you know, you might kind of position yourself on one side or the other or somewhere in the middle and that's essentially, you know, the argument that you're going to uh, support uh, in this outline. So the first and foremost, you can see on the screen uh, where we are at um, on Schoology. There's a couple of things that you can check out. One is under assignments. Um, if you mosey on down, you're going to see uh, the Charlemagne um, outline as one of the assignments. Okay, so if we go up here to the Charlemagne outline and you click on it, you'll notice that there's a description of the assignment here. Okay, so if you're wondering, you know, what is it that I need to do? Um, there is a description of the assignment here. You are creating um, an outline that has a thesis statement so you're answering a particular prompt and the prompt is here in the assignment to what extent did Charlemagne serve as an effective leader who unified his kingdom between 768 and 814 CE you get a chance to um, decide that um, by creating a statement that is going to be your argument, okay? And you don't have to use the word extent in your thesis. You just want to create a thesis that maybe indicates Charlemagne really did unify his kingdom, Charlemagne didn't unify his kingdom, or he did in one way and not another for one group and not another group. Whatever your argument is, it is um, something that should be uh, debatable. Okay, somebody else in the class could be um, creating a different thesis statement. Okay, so you, you want it to be uh, specific and something that you could uh, support if we were to have a class debate. Um, you also, in addition to a thesis, want to develop three paragraph points. Okay, what are three um, points that might support that thesis? Okay, three reasons why that uh, thesis might be true. And under each of these paragraph points, so paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, um, you're going to bullet pieces of evidence, okay? You're not writing an essay, so the intent is not to create three body paragraphs, but to put some of the pieces of what go, would go into a body paragraph. Um, your main point of the paragraph is kind of first, and then you also might include evidence from your sources. And ideally, you should use at least four sources so you might use the Capitulary on Saxony, you might use a Britannica source about Charlemagne, you might use the uh, video that we watched from Smart History, uh, Khan Academy, you might also use um, uh, the Einhard source. And once you have your four sources, you're picking and choosing evidence from all of those sources and you also want to cite uh, that evidence. Okay, and I'm going to show you an example of this. Um, and you're also going to uh, discuss the evidence. So for each paragraph point, you're bulleting some evidence that you actually pulled from the sources, and then you're going to discuss how those pieces of evidence might support your points. Okay? You do um, need to uh, do an OPVL uh, for one of your sources. Okay? So you're asked to um, OPVL, think of values and limitations of one of your sources. So for example, for the Khan Academy video source, one of the limitations of that source is that it's used for educational purposes. So there might be some detail that's left out because it's not really for scholars of Charlemagne, it's for students who are learning about Charlemagne in school. Um, the same thing with Britannica. It's designed for high school student use, that might be a limitation. And in your outline, if you use that as a source, you might note that as a limitation. Okay? Um, so the assignment can be found. Um, there's also a section on Schoology that you might, um, and the rubric is there also, so there's documents attached to um, that assignment. You also can go to materials for class, okay? So if you travel over to materials for class, you are going to see a folder that has uh, 
about Charlemagne. If you go to that folder about Charlemagne, you have um, the primary sources and you have secondary sources. So if I click on the primary sources, I might get a few. Okay, there's a source about Charlemagne and currency. There's a source about the coronation of Charlemagne by the Pope in the year 800, Einhard's uh, biography, the capitulary of Diedenhofen, and there is, of course, the capitulary on Saxony we looked at in class. Okay, you can also uh, use that as a primary source. Then, of course, you can also go to some of the secondary sources, and you might have some secondary sources. There's a bunch, okay? In some cases, it's a video clip. In some cases, it might be Britannica. Uh, there might be a variety of different uh, sources, okay? And they should all have um, uh, citation information available. But you're looking to pick and choose, you know, four different sources. Doesn't matter if they're primary or secondary, um, totally fine, okay? Um, you can, of course, also look up your own uh, sources. We'll talk about that some more in class, but you're always welcome to supplement the uh, way that you find information, you know, by you can supplement the resources um, that are listed here. The other thing I wanted to showcase is a student sample, okay? So let's look at a particular uh, sample. Um, let's see, I'm actually going to pick uh, this sample because I think it's a little easier to uh, address, okay? Um, I know that it's hard uh, to see this in class and my apologies uh, to try to make it clear to everybody, but here's a student who took the question, put the question at the top, um, and put the assertion or the thesis statement also at the top, okay? Notice there's no introductory paragraph. We're not doing an introduction or a conclusion with this. We're solely just doing the um, outline. So the only thing the student needs on the top is uh, the thesis statement. Throughout the entirety of his reign, Charlemagne conquered many lands, maintained powerful alliances, proving his efficaciousness as a leader. Through these military affairs, Charlemagne successfully united the kingdom through the Christian faith until his death. Okay, so this student has kind of suggested Charlemagne was successful in uniting his kingdom. He did it through Christianity, and he did this up until the point uh, of his death in 814. The first point that the student made is that Charlemagne was skilled in conquering lands and military affairs, enabling him to create a vast empire, okay? Under this point, you can see four bulleted pieces of evidence. One is from the Einhard source, okay? One is from Thought Company, uh, what made Charlemagne so great, okay? And you can see the student actually put quotes here, and you can cite these at the end, or you can do it as this student did in the beginning. The Renaissance of Charlemagne, okay, it's another source that's on Schoology. The papacy of his time was weak. It was Charlemagne's political and military power, provided the channels uh, through which the doctrines and ideals of Christianity could be disseminated. So the student has literally pulled from the sources information and content that would support the point that the student created, okay? Um, writing an essay is a little bit of creative thinking because you have to create some of the argument uh, that you're going to be making. This student, in addition to putting four pieces of evidence, okay, which happen to be from a variety of different sources, um, there is a discussion. The discussion is in the student's voice. This information up here is cited and it's in the voice of the author of the evidence. Okay, It's taken directly from the evidence. This is a discussion that the student did. Charlemagne was very skilled in the military, advanced through the course of his reign. He doubled the size of his empire. By doing so, different types of people you know, under his reign, um, he had to unify them. Uh, the, he encountered many different great groups of people, the Saxons, the Lombards, and uh, you know, there's some reference to some of the evidence up here to solve these issues. He made the brilliant and effective decision to unite them under one culture, specifically a religion. So the student is kind of taking um, what the evidence suggests and making um, an argument using uh, her own words, okay? Um, and then there's a second point, okay? So a second point that supports the thesis. Charlemagne enforced Christianity upon his people, united his empire, but the empire fell apart after his death, but with a legacy of Christianity, okay? So this is a student who's gonna make this case and argue it 
we have the evidence underneath the point, and then we also have the discussion, okay? Now, clearly, you could have a very different thesis statement. You could make the case that Charlemagne, while on paper it seems like he united his kingdom, perhaps he didn't for a variety of reasons, okay? So you could have a thesis statement that's very specific. He united his kingdom in one way. He was effective even though he didn't unite his kingdom. He united his kingdom. He wasn't effective. There's um, endless um, numbers of, you know, thesis statements that you could have. The points are um, like kind of ways to support your thesis. What are the three arguments you might need to make in order for your thesis to be true? Okay, so if you outline your thesis and outline your three points, then find evidence for each point, discuss that evidence, you will be in very good shape. Okay, this student has the discussion, okay, that kind of suggests about Charlemagne having good intentions. He wanted the empire to be unified under one faith, uh, he yearned to help the poor. This is from the Einhard source. He did so by sending money to Christians. And then uh, point three, Charlemagne maintained powerful alliances with kings of other empires. Um, he added to the glory of his reign because he uh, got the goodwill of several kings and nations. Um, he was skilled in maintaining strong foreign relations. So we have the evidence here. We also have the discussion. Um, he had strong alliances. So perhaps that helped him uh, support the Christians in his his, uh, you know, empire. Um, he had um, firm religion. People were brought together. The king was willing to provide for those in need. Um, this particular uh, example gives us some of the pieces, okay? The hard part is the thinking work that it takes to kind of create uh, the argument. Lastly, the student did an OPVL, okay, of one source. This is the life of Charlemagne, and you can get a sense of how short an OPVL is, okay? This is the primary source created by Einhard. It was created around 830 to 833 after Charlemagne's death, this source with a biography of Charlemagne, okay? If the student wanted to, they can also put in here the um, MLA citation of where you actually uh, got the um, Einhard source, okay, which I think is um, uh, a website you know that I had posted on Schoology that MLA information might also go in origin okay um, this is supposed to be purpose not point but purpose the purpose of the source uh, there's some discussion about that the value of the source and the limitation of the source okay um, once you have your OPBL you can note your uh, sources a minimum of four uh, but you could have more than four um, and then that's the end of your outline assignment, okay? So just kind of to uh, reiterate this, okay? Uh, let me just do that, okay? Um, this is, I'm changing this because I realized it said the wrong thing. Um, this is the kind of uh, maybe checklist of and steps that you can do. You're going to read a few sources and take some notes, and you're going to have that question that's on Schoology in mind. To what extent was Charlemagne effective? To what extent did he um, unite his kingdom? The second uh, thing you're gonna do is answer that question. Your answer, your very specific answer, is your thesis statement. You're gonna put that on top of your outline. You're gonna imagine that you're writing um, an essay outline, except you're not going to include the introduction or the conclusion. You can list four sources in a bibliography. This can come at the end, this can come at the beginning. Either is fine. You're going to develop three points that support your thesis, okay? Three statements that you're making that make your thesis true. For each point, you have two categories uh, of information. One is going to be some bulleted pieces of evidence that are directly from the sources, and you're gonna note to your reader where the sources come from. You're also going to do a discussion in your own voice. How would you use that evidence to support your point, okay? This is where, just like you do in class, where you indicate um, how you might take a source and make a particular point with it, that's what you're doing in your own voice in that, okay? And you're um, adding one OPVL, okay? Um, I hope that helps a little bit, and um, I have some samples on uh, Schoology. I think I put one page of each sample just to give you an idea. Um, if you're looking for the longer version, uh, just let me know. Okay, have a good rest of the day, everyone.